Hello everybody, you speaking to you, well, I'm speaking to you. My name is Steph and I'm coming to you from the River Camp Command all the way here at Mara Camp. Right up on top of the mountain here at Angola Mara. But what I do have at my disposal is the controls of the River Camps. And just have a look at the scene that we have at Cul-de-Sac Crossing. One of the crossing points on the famous Mara River. And we've got two of the apex predators in this area all having a bit of a face-off with one another. The Nile Crocodile and of course the African Lion are two of the top predators in their environments. Very similar to how a killer whale and a polar bear would be, or um, a tiger and a crocodile for that matter of fact, in India, or a killer whale and a great white shark. So apex or top predators can share the same niche and they can share the same environment, albeit they look a bit out of sorts when they are sharing this contact zone. Now the contact zone is the Mara River. The Mara River is relatively close and I would imagine that these lions came down for a drink and then found this crocodile sunning itself on the beach. Now, of course, there is uh, all types of action happening on these uh, crossing cameras. So why don't we go and have a look at Dusty Crossing where an elephant has just decided to join us. This is a bull elephant, another one of these apex creatures or in this particular sense, a keystone creature. In other words, something that is so beneficial to the environment that without it, the environment would actually fall to pieces. This is a male elephant. It's not often that we see elephants on these crossing cameras this, this closely. For some reason, they tend to enjoy their water at times of the day when we are not manning these cameras. Isn't that just a fantastic view of this huge bull elephant on the banks of the famous Mara River, some hippo in the top just off to the left of center. Now, I know this is a male elephant from this particular angle because of the slope of his forehead. Female elephants generally have a very sharp angle uh, pointing towards us. So if you had to put your fingers together in sort of a steepled uh, um, manner and then turn them 90 degrees, you'll notice that that is basically the angle of a female's head. Whereas if you curl your fist into a um, a, a semicircle, a half circle, that is in a male elephant's forehead, and you can see his forehead there. Also, the male elephant's tusks are usually pointed forward, whereas a female elephant's tusks are pointed down, generally speaking. That's not always the case, but it's just generally speaking. And also, female tusks are a little bit more slender and a bit more delicate than what male's tusks are, who use their tusks for fighting, of course, and that is why they are a little bit more forward pointing and robust. Now this particular bull elephant is leaking some fluid from a gland just behind his eye. And you notice, for those of you who've seen a lot of elephant, that that gland is swollen. That gland can swell up, swell up, excuse me, swell up uh, to about three times its normal size. It's called the preorbital gland. And that happens when an elephant bull is in a condition called must, which is a heightening of the testosterone levels that a bull elephant makes roughly up to 70% more than what they would be normally. And this creates all, or this causes all the glands in a bull elephant's body to super secrete and also makes them super unpredictable and angry, but it also makes them super um, arduous, I should say, is, the, is, the, is, the, is that the word? Is that the word I'm looking for when a bull elephant is, can't think of anything else except for eating, drinking, and looking for some ladies. Um, Female elephant, on the other hand, are super attracted to the smell that a bull elephant produces. Of course, one of the glands that is, uh, goes into hyperdrive is the prostate gland. And in particular, elephants will leak a fluid onto their back legs from their prostate gland that stains their legs white. Uh, you can sometimes see it. This elephant's had a bath, so it may not be prevalent there. But you can just see that sort of staining down the back legs. That is Quite a there you can just see the dark marks on the inside of the legs. There we go. That's from that secretion uh, from the prostate gland. And that has a very distinctive smell. That elephants, or female elephants at least, can't resist. And they are much more attracted to bull elephants in these states. Now watch this guy's going to push our camera over. Let's see what he does. This is the first time on one of these Mara cameras that a bull elephant is actually 
been this close. We've never had an elephant this close before. And we don't quite know how these animals are going to react to these cameras. They're, of course, as silent as we, we can make them. They're battery operated and uh, they don't have any big solar panels. We painted them camouflaged colors and hidden them in these bushes. And this elephant basically didn't even bat an eyelid. He's now walking on these pathways next to the river. These are hippo pathways normally. And he's looking for the grass that other animals haven't touched because of it. Isn't this just fantastic? Might give us a good chance now from the back to see a secretion between his legs, but it doesn't look like he's... This, uh, this condition called must can last up to 100 days in an elephant per year. Um, and they will go into must anywhere from their 30s all the way until they, they sort of stopped from doing that in their 50s. Isn't this just fantastic? Wow. And that is that from that bull elephant. He's now going around the corner. And of course, this camera cannot move like our vehicles can. But something which can move is Taylor, who's on search for heartbeats at Juma. That we are indeed, Steph, and hopefully we're going to...